Sometimes for our dashboards, we want to be able to provide a way to seamlessly swap sheets using some kind of a drop-down or a menu. Perhaps we want our end users to be able to select their own charts, or sometimes we want to have an easy way to swap between a chart and, let's say, a detailed cross-tab. This strategy is called sheet swapping, and it creates the illusion of seamlessly changing the charts or sheets on demand. In this tutorial, we will look at three ways to do this. In the first method, we will use a parameter, a filter, and a container. In the second method, we are going to use the show and hide button that come with our containers and our worksheets. In the third method, we are going to use navigation buttons. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. I think I am a curious person, but I definitely need help on the creativity bit. I use Tableau in my daily work to create charts, dashboards, and presentations. However, I find myself wanting to learn more and more on how I can better present data stories. I look for new ways to improve the narrative, the design components, the usability, or the layout of the work that I do. And if there's such a thing as a writer's block, there's probably one called a visualizer's block. This is where I lean on Skillshare. I browse through their courses, and there's always something that piques my interest. Inspiration comes in many forms, and for me, sometimes it's a drawing class, a lettering class, a photo editing class, or an illustration class that gets me going. Another good thing is that many of these courses can be done within a short period of time. So the few minutes or the few hours you spend on a course is definitely going to pay off. If you're curious to see which courses will spark your inspiration, check out Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Let's get started. Let's start by connecting to our sample Superstore dataset that comes with our installation of Tableau. So let's drag this sample Excel file over to an open instance of Tableau desktop. So drag this over. Let's connect to the Orders tab. And let us start by creating three very simple tabs. The first one is simply a bar chart with subcategory and sales. So subcategory and rows and sales and columns. Let's call this one a bar. On a new worksheet, let's right-click drag order date onto columns and let us select the continuous month value to create a time axis chart. Let's click OK. Let's take sales onto rows. Let's call this a line chart or line. Let's create a third chart and this time it's going to be a map. So brand new worksheet, double click on state. Let's take sales onto color and state onto label. And let's remove this color legend. So on the drop down of the color legend, just hide the card. And let's call this worksheet a map. Now that we have some sample charts to work with, let's go ahead and explore the first method. The first method is one of the older strategies to do sheet swapping. This is a well-documented strategy. The link to the corresponding knowledge base article in the Tableau website is in the description below. There are two core concepts around this first method. First is we will take advantage of filters to make the charts appear or disappear. And the second is we need to make sure that all the charts that we are swapping are in the same container. Let's start by creating a parameter first. So on the drop down in your sidebar, create a parameter. And in here, let's call our parameter choose your chart. We will make this into a string because we want to type in the values that we want to show to our end users. So make this a list and the choices that we're going to add for this particular example will be a bar, a line, a map, and let's also give the choice for all. So just to review, this parameter will be a string. It will use a list of values. It's going to be a bar, a line, a map, and all. And let's click OK. Let's also show the parameter control. So on the drop down, show parameter. Now what we want to do in here is based on this parameter choice, we want this chart to either stay on or to disappear. For example, for the map, 
If the selection is a bar, we want this to disappear. If the selection is a line, again, we want this to disappear. We don't want this to show up. If the selection is a map or all, then we want this chart to be visible. How can we do that? Well, we can take advantage of our filter shelf. The filter shelf simply accepts a field that is either true or false. When it's true, the data points that are correct or true are visible and anything that doesn't match the condition will be invisible or it will be taken out of your viz. So technically what we want in this filter is to evaluate the parameter choice. If this is the same as either a map or all, then whatever we have in that filter has to evaluate the true. Now we need to create a calculated field that we can place onto the filter shelf. We can't simply drag over the parameter onto the filter. It's not going to do it. So on the drop down in your sidebar, let's create a calculated field and let's create another calculated field called chosen chart. We won't have any other expression in here other than the parameter choice. So we can take our parameter, drag that over and let's click OK. Now this chosen chart is the one that's going to go into our filter shelf. Typically in the filter, we choose from available values or we add some kind of condition that will evaluate the true or false. For this example, we actually don't have data points in our data source that we can pick from. So what we need to do is we need to create our own list that will force the expression to be true. So in this case, we are going to choose the custom value list. So let's select custom value list and it also says in here that we can enter text either to search or to add. And that's important. We're adding our own values. We are not searching from values that exist in our data source. So in this case, we want this map to show up if the choice is either a map. And notice in here that as we type in the value, we have two options. It's either a plus or a magnifying lens. What we want is to add. So we need to make sure we click on the plus sign and not press enter or search. We're not searching for anything. After we type in the value, we click on the plus sign and then we add another option. We do have another one called all and we want this to be true as well. So click on the plus sign and let's click on OK. So right now, the map has disappeared because the current selection is bar. When we set this to line, it still doesn't show up. However, when we select a map, we expect this map to show up because it's one of those custom values. When we click on all, it should also stay on. Now we have to do this for all the other charts that we want to swap. So for example, for bar, let's drag this chosen chart onto our filters. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a custom value list. This needs to be true if the selection is either a bar or all. And let's do this for the final chart. The final chart is our line. Again, chosen chart onto the filter shelf, custom value list. And in here, we're going to select a line. So if the selection in the parameter is a line, then we want this to evaluate to true. Click on the plus sign as well as all and click on the plus sign. Click OK. So this is the first part of our method. The second part is to create a dashboard that has a container. And we need to make sure that all the charts that we want to swap are in the same container. So let's create a brand new dashboard first. I'm just going to set the size to something smaller because I have a smaller resolution. Now I will drag over a vertical container and all the charts that I want to swap should be in that vertical container. Now let's just review how containers work. If you have a container, the way this works is the contents of the container will expand or collapse based on the space that's available. So for example, if we have three charts in a single container, all three of them will occupy the space of the container. However, if some of them disappear, then that space is not going to be occupied anymore. And the remaining chart or the remaining content will now expand its size. And this is the trick that allows us to seamlessly switch our charts as if we're swapping them in and out of the container. So let's give this a try. Let's drag over our vertical container. And let's make sure that each of our sheets are inside this container. Notice that our containers have the dark blue border. So make sure that all the charts are within the same dark blue border. So let's drag the first chart over, drag the second chart over, and then drag the third chart over. How do we know they're in the same container? When you double click on the handlebar of any of the worksheets, it should show that they are all within the same blue container or the same blue border. 
So let's try our parameter first. In here, when we select a bar, what we are seeing is the map collapsed, the line collapsed, and the bar is taking more space. Let's try the second type of chart. So in here, line, same thing. The bar has collapsed, the map has collapsed, and the line is now taking majority of the space. Let's try the map. In here, same thing. Bar collapsed, line collapsed, and then map is taking up more of the space. And the final one, if we set this to all, all three of them are going to occupy and share the container space. So this is the basis of the sheet swapping for the first method. There's probably just going to be a little bit of cleanup needed. So for example, in here, when we collapse some of the other charts, we probably don't want the titles to show up. So we can hide the title. So hide the title here, hide the title there. If you find that there is extra space and you want to occupy the rest of that space, make sure you take that worksheet and set the worksheet to entire view. Let's hide the title for this one as well. Okay, so let's try out the line and we can see that now it occupies more space and map occupies the full space and all it will occupy the remaining space. Now, some things to note for this particular technique. For example, let's click on this line. If we somehow fix the height or fix the width, depending on the container that you've chosen, if you fix the height or the width, then it's not going to occupy the rest of the space anymore. For example, let's set this to fix height and let's now change the parameter selection to line. Notice in here that it's actually not occupying the full space. And it's because we've said we want to fix this particular height. So when we go to this particular worksheet, we can see that that push pin is enabled. So Tableau is going to respect that restriction and it's not going to occupy the rest of the space. If we want this to occupy the rest of the space, simply untoggle that push pin or don't fix the height. The second method involves less steps. The second method is using the show hide button. It comes with our containers as well as our worksheets. So for this demo, let's just create a couple of new charts. So the first one, let's create just a very simple bar chart. Let's call this a sales bar. So change the worksheet name. Let's call this sales bar. And perhaps we want subcategory, order date on columns and sales on columns. Let's create another worksheet that just has a detailed crosstab equivalent of this particular chart. So new worksheet, let's rename this sales. Let's call this details. We're going to take the same subcategory. Let's put year onto columns. And this time around, we're just going to simply take sales and then put that in the middle of the screen where it says ABC. So it's going to be our crosstab. Let's also add all of our totals. So under analytics, double click on totals. Now that we have our two simple charts, let's create a dashboard. I'll just change this dashboard to have a lower resolution, so laptop browser. And this time, all we need to do is to superimpose one chart on top of the other. For example, let's start with our bar chart. Let's also add our titles. Let's call this our sales dashboard. Sales dashboard. And in here, we're going to drag our details. We're going to keep this floating and we're going to put this right on top of our chart. So covering the whole chart. So let's set this to floating first. Let's take our details. And we're just going to put that right on top of our bar chart. Now notice in here that the titles are overlapping and we're seeing remnants of our bar chart. So there's a few things we need to do and adjust on our details worksheet. So first, let's make sure that this worksheet is set to entire view. If we can still see some of the underlying charts, what we can do is just double check. Make sure that for this particular worksheet, let's go to this one worksheet, make sure that the background or the shading is set to an opaque color. So in this case, maybe it's just going to be white. Let's go back to the dashboard. We're also seeing that the titles are overlapping. So we just need to make sure that the shading of our title is also not transparent, but an opaque color. So right click on the title, let's format the title. And in here, we can see that shading is none. We're just simply going to change that into an opaque color. So for example, white, let's close this. So now how do we swap the sheets? When you click on the drop down, there is an option to add a button. It's called a show hide button. So in this case, we are really playing around with our details worksheet. We're either showing it and when we're showing it, the chart underneath will not be visible or we can hide it to show the bar chart that's underneath it. 
So let's add that button. So on the drop down, add show hide button. By default, it's going to be this little X mark, but we can just put this on the side. So it's a little bit more visible. So let's edit the button, click on the drop down, edit button. And in here we have a few options. We can either use images. If we have some icons that we're already using, we can use those, or we can also use a text button. In this case, I'm simply going to select text. Now, a couple other options. What text do we want to show when this chart, so this is the details, what do we want to show when this chart is visible? So in this case, if the chart is visible, which is our details, we can simply say hide it because it's already shown at that time. So hide details. But if the item is hidden, if the details cross tab is not being shown, what do we want the title to be? Well, in this case, we can just say show details. This show hide button is simply a toggle and it reacts whether the component is hidden or shown. So in this case, let's just click OK. Let's make this button a little bit wider. So right now, the detail is shown. So the option we have is to hide it. Now, if you hover over this particular button, it's also going to show you that simply clicking this button will not enable the action. It will not hide the details. And that's because we're still in design view. If we simply click on the button, it's going to edit the button. But if we want it to run the action, then we have to press Alt and then click. The other option is to show this dashboard in presentation mode. So if we set this to presentation mode, we can see that it enables this action. If I click on hide details, it's going to hide the cross tab. And when the cross tab is hidden, the title of the button changes. So now it's giving me an option to show the details. And again, in here, it's just simply going to be a toggle. The third method of using navigation buttons is not very different from the second method. There's very few differences. The first difference is now we're going to navigate or move away from an existing dashboard. In the second method, we stayed within the same dashboard. In the third method, we're going to go from one dashboard to another dashboard. And the other difference is simply that we're going to use navigation buttons instead of the show hide button. So let's create this. Let's create a new dashboard. Let's call this a chart. Let's set this to laptop browser. Let's also set this to tiled and let's drag our sales bar. Let's also add our dashboard title. So again, this is just our chart. Let's create another dashboard and let's call this details. Let's drag our details over. Make sure that this is set to laptop browser. Let's also add our dashboard title. And let's set this one to entire view. So this time around, instead of this show hide button, we're not going to use that. What we're going to use is the navigation buttons under the objects. Let's float the navigation button. So just float this, drag the navigation button. Let's place this on the top right side. Let's double click. So this one, we want this to navigate to our chart dashboard. So chart dashboard. And in here, the title is show chart. And let's click OK. Let's reformat this a little bit. Now we're going to do something similar for the chart and allow it to navigate to the details. So under chart, let's drag over our navigation button. Let's double click this. We want this to navigate to our details and let's set the title to show details. Show details. Click OK. Reformat this a little bit and let's give it a try. So in presentation mode, show details, show chart, show details, show chart. And that's it. It's a quick tutorial showing you three methods to swap sheets in Tableau. I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you again next time.